It's a Zach Sang show. <laughs> We're starting now. We got okay. Heather, we got Dan, we got Leon Hello. Thomas. What's up? What's up? I feel good. I feel at home here. Uh, cool. The couch is so comfortable. That makes me so happy because oh, I've known man. you for a very long time That's and right. we've never done like an actual sit down full right full I mean, fledged conversation is absolutely amazing I, I, i'm just so proud of your growth oh, I mean, man. We, are, we are we are really good friends yeah. past everything else Love. and um you know uh it's, it's just good to see you winning man oh, dude thank you and, and same to you i mean seriously since nickelodeon i mean you won a grammy Bro, oh, <laughs> you did? Thank you, brother. I did. Yeah, yeah. I worked with uh, Tony <laughs> Braxton and Babyface. I've been uh, producing under Babyface for the past, I want to say, four or five years. Uh, even while I was on Victorious, I was just, you know, going to set and then running to, you know, his studio to learn just the ins and outs of production and writing. Uh, I'm a big fan of all the songs that he was a part of. I mean, from Whitney Houston to Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a legend. Uh, discovered people like Usher and um, <laughs> <laughs> Destiny. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's it's. Kind of crazy, mm. TLC. How so, does that relationship happen? Who introduces who to who? Well, you know, uh, my life has been kind of interesting, man. Uh, pa past kind of has been really interesting. And Columbia Records put me in the studio with Babyface. Back originally because Victorious, the whole, uh, a majority of the yeah. cast had a record deal with Columbia. Exactly. You know, exactly. only, you know, one song was, a couple songs were released, obviously, right, and one right. artist was really worked on. But through Columbia, you met Babyface? Yeah, through Columbia, I met Babyface. And, uh, you know, we really hit it off. Uh, he wanted to do my whole project at the time. Cool. And um, I just wanted to learn how to make magic. I wanted to learn how to do what he was doing. You know, I was just such a huge fan. I mean, my parents, they ran a club date band. And they used to sing all of his songs. So um, I, wow. I was very familiar with the work. Your mom. Like, when you tell your mom that, like, Babyface wants to work with you, like, what does she do? I know your mom. I can you only know, imagine. You know, at some point... You know, I've been extremely blessed my whole life, man, and 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 um, I've just been walking this destiny, and and my mother is extremely proud, yeah. but but um, not to say that it's expected, but but she she's at a space now where she's extremely proud of me, but she was always just you know trying to push for greatness, of course, and um, it was not expected, but 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 she she somewhere in her heart knew that that someday we would cross paths. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think like Babyface saw himself in you almost, which I kind of understand. I mean, you know, a uh, singer songwriter, I play the guitar. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an easy fit. Yeah, but mm -hmm. but um, you know. There's big differences, um, yeah. but 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 uh, it's just, it's just really one of those awesome moments to have a mentor. A lot of people go through this industry figuring it out on their own, and luckily I'm able to kind of ask him questions about just just <sighs> what to do. Like he's literally seen. Diddy become Diddy. He's yeah. seen Pharrell become Pharrell, Timbaland become Timbaland, and they all were ready to give him coffee to get him whatever he needed <laughs> in his heyday. So you know, I, I just look up to him as as one of the originators of of um, the mold of being more than just an artist. I mean, he's you, a CEO. You, you yes, know I mean he he had an amazing record uh, label, and he also you know was able to to maintain his stardom. Through, it, throughout the process. I, you can't even put like a tangible like like amount or like value on that because it is so, it's incredible. I mean, you're just collecting knowledge. Yeah, a yeah, every time. Yeah. I mean, I, I called uh, Brand His Way, which is a studio I work out of yeah. that is his, is his secret and you know bat layer um <laughs> it, it, it it's pretty it's, cool it's my college you know yeah. i called that my college because i was i was in there working every day learning new things how to work pro tools logic you know getting it going just 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 the art of writing a song and what happened from there is i was able to step into the urban world and um you know, work with artists like Post Malone yeah. and, you know, Young Thug and, and Future and Kanye West. And it'd be like one of those things where they respect, you know, the the kind of OG aspect I bring to, That's to, it. to the writing yeah. process or the production process. Because Babyface you know? is kind of, he's bestowed his knowledge upon yeah, you. Yeah, it's kind of embedded in him. the way that I create now. So how know? do yeah. you stand out in a room like that, right? When there's people working on a Post Malone record or a Kanye record, what is, like, how do you stand above the rest? How do you cut well, through? Well, I write two different ways, you know. Sometimes I'll go into the booth and I'll come up with melodies and I'll do what every rapper does and just vibe. Uh -huh. Or I'll do the OG approach and I'll sit down in, in in that seat and I'll write a song. Yeah. You know, and that is rare right now. People mm -hmm. look at you like an alien if you're not like, oh, can I get some auto-tune on? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm like, uh, yeah, I got a little pen or I'm a little phone and I'm just in there like oh, vibing out to the beat and, and then I'll go in and sing a song and they're like, what the, what's going on? Like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> That's awesome. So it's just different, you know. I had no idea you've worked with all these people. 
So when I'm kind of the- under the, you know, kind of under the radar. For me, I feel like the braggadocious nature of our society right now, the 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 social media culture is awesome. But I feel like people do a little too much shining for me. Yeah, they're doing a little too much. It's yeah. it's like it's a little too braggadocious. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather you find out in an interview. I'd rather you find out. Uh, just looking through the credits, you know, like, yeah. because I feel like being online every day, like, yeah, I'm working with your favorite artist. I'm this guy. I'm that guy. It doesn't pay my bills. Like, it, no. just, it just makes me look like, like a jerk. But doesn't yeah. it kind of help you grow as like a person in popularity if you're posting pictures in the studio with Kanye or Young Thug or whoever right. you're working with at the time? Well, the thing is, is that the way the industry works right now, um, the Internet has changed everything. I'm not in the studio with these people, you know, like they don't even get to learn my name. They don't really get to, we don't get to have that interaction that we would have had in the seventies or in the early eighties. You know, we have Wi-Fi, and, uh, I, I make a beat in my bedroom or I go to my boy's crib up in PCH and we create and we vibe. And then that gets sent to so-and-so and then Kanye will hear it or thug will hear it or future will hear it. And then it'll just turn into a song and I'll get my publishing set. And then next thing I know, I, I got a record out. Yeah. This is just a machine. And and you get a I'm cool with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get, get your name on a platinum record and you're happy. I know, you know? it was so yeah. easy. <laughs> in which, in, which is, which is, better for you is it the feeling of being in the studio with somebody and having that creative energy and having that artist in there in the moment with you or it's like a first day yeah it's a first day <laughs> it's it's hit or miss man you know i mean the chemistry isn't you know it's just I, one of those I things that it. it could it could work out it could be awesome or I could be kind of awkward because I'm a child actor. And, you know, like, I'm not used to social situations. Like, I was homeschooled for the last two years of my high school experience. So it's like, you know, I, it, it could be super awkward. I, I, I'm down, though. Yeah. You know, I feel like I'm a pretty nice guy, man. I think you know, so. Like, you seem well adjusted. Yeah, yeah, I'll figure it out. You know, I'll figure my life out. I remember going to the studio and you and Ari were working together mm-hmm. and it was the coolest thing ever. You were at Babyface's studio. Because we were friends. <laughs> yeah, it was different. Friends, yeah. And, and you did, you did a ton of songs. You did Honeymoon Avenue, which is, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that was the song you were recording when I showed up there. Wow. I mean, a, when she, you really, the Rascals put their touch on that record. Man, I mean, it was a, it was definitely a different song when it came to us. Yeah. Um, and we had this idea of adding live strings to it. And it was, it was like my first time going to, you know, a studio and having like a, I think we had a, 20 piece orchestra just wow. like going going at it uh, you know we were like oh great job do that again like you know like, i mean it, it felt cool i didn't even know what to say like uh great can we leave now they're like no we just try it again i'm like all right cool it. We're like, <laughs> no i'm sorry but uh, no, no but um it's just one of those things where I don't know. It, it it was just awesome working with my friend, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it's such a rare thing. Like I said, you don't know these people. A lot of people have these guards up. They're 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 dealing with leechy, horrible people oh. all the time. Mm-hmm. So when they get into the studio, that should be their safe place. But it, it just takes time to kind of build that of course. environment for an artist, you know. And with you and Ari, I mean, it was it, it was easier to get there. You know what I mean? Like, right. You right. obviously had worked together many many hours before you started. About it. Yeah. We talked about it. We talked about it. And that's the thing, the the power of words. We used to be in that schoolroom speaking about exactly what we wanted. I was wow. I was I was telling her about my dreams of being able to rock in the big studios and do yeah. my thing, you know. And she was telling me about her big dreams of being like Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey and and it's just really awesome to see that she she she's went above and beyond and 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 that even I've been able to go above and beyond what I expected I would be able to do. I mean, I had no idea I'd win a Grammy at 21. <laughs> like that's like not in the cards for most people. They think, mm-hmm. you know, maybe one day. I mean, yeah. people work their whole lives for that. So I don't know. I, I mean, we're we're extremely blessed individuals, and it's awesome when we get a chance to just get creative. Goosebumps, goosebumps right now. Same. Because, because I think that I think that's something that's shared amongst you know the other Victorious kids as well, right? Yeah. Like you guys did verbalize it. Everybody mm-hmm. knew in that cast that like people were destined for so much more, right? This is just the starting point for something incredible, right? Right. You know? It was definitely uh, an amazing uh, an amazing launching pad for all of us, man. We we um. It's funny. I worked with Nickelodeon since I was 13, 12 years old. They, Backyard again. Backyard again. Yeah. And so I, I literally grew up on the network from Nick Jr. all the way up to Teen Nick. And then I graduated and went into, <laughs> you know, doing movies and, and other stuff in the acting world outside of the Nick umbrella. But yeah. it was just really awesome to 
to kind of grow up in the industry that way and to have that, you know, big brother uh, mm -hmm. of sense. When you got Victorious, what did you originally see it as? Did you see it as like a vessel for everything else you wanted to do in life? Or did you see it as a show that you were cool with like doing for like a very, very long time? Well, I... You know, I didn't know what to expect when I first got there because they told me, all right, this is going to be an ensemble show. You know, think um, not like all that, but yeah. but 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 just know you're dealing with the Dan Schneider mold. And I'm a huge Keenan and Kel fan. I'm a huge Amanda Show, Drake and John. I mean, yeah, I mean, anybody God, our yeah. age knows how amazing Dan Schneider to, is. To so, say genius doesn't even do it justice. Yeah, so. I was just I was just blessed to be there. Yeah, bro. I mean, I was just thankful. I Talk mean, about somebody else that you want to just gather knowledge from, right? Yeah, and just be exactly. around and learn from and be in to their be zone. To be able to ask questions, man. Yeah, to be able to ask those questions was what was a blessing in itself and then to be you know a participant in something that oh. great and to see that people received it as that you know like i had a kid walk up to me and say you know i i had nothing my family was you know super poor man but you know you guys made me laugh in times when we were super sad and it's just it's crazy to see that people you know were really affected by this show they yeah. were you know they it really it really molded a lot of a lot of human beings now <laughs> it's just yeah. it's just nuts to even think of that you know people grew up with us oh yeah and i think it was the first you know obviously i was i was kind of i, I experienced all of it parallel to like just like whether it was interviewing you guys or working for the network to understand like how big the show actually was and i think it was the first show really for kids tv that like really exploded with social media as like a very big help to it right like mm -hmm. it, it was unlike anything I, I, right. I, it was un, because, yeah, unmatched we were, before exactly because we were really around the birth of, uh, of the oh, social media Instagram society. and yeah. YouTube Instagram was a thing we were using for filters oh. like it, it was right. literally like oh they got these cool filters now it looks vintage uh, cool <laughs> I'm signing up too yeah. 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 and then like now it's this huge thing people are making all this money up. I'm like whoa it, it's crazy we were doing it for That's fun it, it was a vibe you know? not like, saying Zoe 101 or like Drake and Josh weren't like game changing shows but they weren't around when Instagram and Twitter were really first right. because, like you know building like a mold and like really growing here and you guys yeah. wrote that social media wave like huge and it just, it, just it, figuring it out it man. added to the show's success oh it definitely did and the it fame that did. went along with it right like in, right. in ways that like i think were crazy like you guys would draw crowds everywhere you went orlando right. was like the biggest that was, example that, of that was nuts man and i mean i mean orlando was crazy but uh there was an experience that me and vic had in uh germany what? that really that really shaped just 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 my viewpoint of what was going on because yeah. i mean we were thinking we we were going out there to promote you know the album that we had just did for the show um thinking that it was going to be kind of quiet like not how it was in the states but when we went out there man they were acting like we were the beatles or something in berlin <laughs> they were banging on the, the doors and and the windows crazy. and stuff and jumping on the car we were like whoa what's happening here i mean it was a whole new level of i guess you would say fame and it was just a beautiful experience, man. I, I I was definitely extremely grateful for for you know the opportunity. Did you see that uh, victorious video that went viral this week? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I sent that to Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I had sent, sent it to her. Liz. Like it was funny because she was the one doing the most talking, just in there spitting, just doing thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, did, but but like, do you remember when that was actually like shot? Like when they took that video? Oh, I remember the whole <laughs> thing. Was, and, and, you know, you know, what's funny about all of that stuff, man. You know, it, it's just, that was our high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was our high school. So, like, we weren't, like, it, that was our classroom. These were our peers. This is what we had to deal with. That, that was our only real social interactions without, you know, the, so, somebody trying to gain, gain something. And, and, and you know, it, it was, it, you know, of course you're going to have your ups and downs. But, but I feel like it's natural, man. It's life. It's life. And, and it was definitely a funny video, definitely a funny video, but it doesn't really reflect the nature of of of, of the entire experience because I felt like everything was, for the most part, really dope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you guys all still close? Like, I, I, I see pictures of all of you, then it still seems like, I know there was rumors that like, Victoria didn't get along, but, like, you guys were all at Ariana's concert and she wasn't there. Do, do you guys right. still all talk? Well, the thing is, I reach out to Vic, we text. We're not, like, first off, most of us are pretty bad with our phones, except for Ariana. <laughs> she's like, she's attached to the hip with her phone. But like, yes. uh, we, we, 
I, I know I'm horrible with my phone. My family's like, hey, you good, bro? You breathing? Like, <laughs> but like, you know, I try to call people. I try to let people know you, I love them. And you're I love a phone call each, guy, too. Yeah, I'm a phone call you guy. You had this I, discussion. I love a good old phone mm-hmm. call because we get everything done. All this texting and stuff, it, it's tough. But, you know, me and Vic, we, 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 we hopped on a call last year. Um late last year and, and um i know we're definitely going to kick it soon mm-hmm. you know it's just tough man everybody's busy getting yeah. it mm-hmm. in i mean i know my time is limited and i'm i'm just kind of making it work I, i'm pretty much my own boss but like for everybody else who's who's doing their thing and it, i know it's definitely tough to to you know carve out that that personal exactly. old castmate uh, time like, a, you know? a very political and well very, uh, very thought out well answer said, yeah. hey man let me let you know my mom always <laughs> used to tell me she always just say you know I think you can be a politician man you can there really you go. knock it out cause I, I mean it's just what it's all about and we know? need some good ones now so we think do about it things are a little rough right now yeah. <laughs> it's a little rough let's skip that subject yeah, yeah. well let's talk Last music out there. <laughs> let's talk music and what you're writing about right yeah. and where you're drawing inspiration because I think it's interesting right. it kind of par- like it draws us into something you know some musicians draw inspiration from what's going on in, around the world and in our society and right. you know obviously others are dig deep and personal where do you go how, how do you channel it all well it's been it's been an interesting experience you know I haven't been in a committed relationship in a very long time um, just due to my hustle my grind yeah. it's been it's been my girlfriend it's been my fiance but um, <laughs> you know it, it's just one of those things where I'm I'm, I'm surviving off of old situations to write about you okay know, got it which is which is interesting so now I'm in a in 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 the process of finishing this EP that was about older situations but now that that's wrapping up I gotta live some life man yeah. I gotta live some life because you know it's it, it's getting to a point where I'm gonna I'm gonna need to start you know finding my muse again Wait, was she your fiance Definitely not. No, Definitely I didn't not. think so. Yeah. I, I, oh, the I'm, music, I'm not that. The music, music was your fiance. The that's music what was his fiance. fiance. His Got fiance. It. The my fiance. So you li- like Beyonce? Yeah, <laughs> but not. <laughs> but not at all. No. Like, come on, now. not even close. Yeah. Um, so you live all this life. You let it gather, and then you kind of tear it apart. You dissect it, and then that's where you're pulling songs out of. Yeah, but I mean, you know, one of my when I was in New York, one of my mentors back then. Uh, Bob Power, who did Tribe Called Quest, D'Angelo, Erica Badu, stuff cool. like that, right? So he, I would, I would come there and I would write about my little girlfriends in high school. And he'd be like, "All right, no, stop, <laughs> don't write your life." And I was like, "What?" I was like, what? "That's the opposite of what everybody told me." He was like, "You know, it would just be smart for you to come up with a really amazing concept." And work off of that. So for the most part right now, what I focus on more so than anything else is how I'm telling the story. Like, yeah. what is the concept? Because that is the meat of the record. Like, you got to know exactly what you're talking about. But past love, past I'm hurt, past, like, how are you going to say that? How are you going to package that so that it's different from the a million other, you know, R and B or soulful or, or, or even pop artists yeah. out here doing their thing and writing songs every day, you know? So did you write the lyrics to Rendezvous? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote them, uh, co-wrote them with my my boy Philly Swain, who's um, a very talented rapper, freestyle rapper, who um, kind of brought some of the new school patterns to it uh, on the verses. Cool. Um, I feel like that is what is needed right now in our society our our ears are trained for for you know th- those kind of rhythms yeah and i just kind of like to have like a, a second opinion sometimes to say all right how can we how can we build something something cool you know of course add some bars in there kind of kind of you know you need someone something. to challenge you creatively oh yeah oh yeah so with all these songs are you writing them producing them singing i write them? i are write and produce for 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 my stuff personally i i, I produce and write Okay. Uh, just about all of it um but but i i have you know collaborators that i i love to just work with you know people that i work with uh, for for other artists and um for the most part it, it's 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 usually just you know me and my production partner would do a lot of stuff together um you know my boy jp rich uh from from the production duo the uh, blended babies we 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 work a lot um just just on some some really amazing sounds and i mean they were they were very influential in uh discovering road james and uh anderson pack and okay. so it's like it's like got that real funky live yeah. vibe to it so it's very different but i feel like the timing is 
just right right now with, with, with artists like Steve Lacey and Daniel Caesar, you know, approaching the forefront of, of uh, pop culture. It's coming soon. I know the wave is coming. Yeah. I've just been like getting my stuff ready. So mm -hmm. I know I got a movie coming out. I got a show on HBO I'm filming right now. <laughs> okay. I want it all to just connect and, 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 and I'll touch down in the right way. So do you have, you were mentioning before and you mentioned the production duo that you did a song for. You've been kind of just lending vocals to, to, to song, like tracks that already exist, right? Or you've been just collaborating with some people and putting your vocals on uh, on records? Well, the thing is, for me, I play five instruments, man. So when I'm when I'm producing, and I've been producing in Logic for the last five years. Yeah. Actually, what's what's crazy? Most of my placements have been based off of me producing. Yeah. You know? So um, it's been it's been more than lending vocals, but but a lot of the stuff that's out right but, now. Well, that's what I'm asking. A lot right? of the stuff, the stuff that's, stuff that's out about right to now, hit. I've been lending vocals Got to it. a lot of their uh, you know open canvases. You know, I mean, it's just really awesome to see that you know they 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 have these worlds I can kind of live in lyrically. Yes. And then I'll just kind of do my thing in the meantime while I while, while you I have everything else going on. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. So like with the stuff that you're just lending your vocals to, right, and you're lending yeah, your lyrics yeah. to, is the hope that like one of those becomes like a smash record is the hope that one of those breaks through i feel like in in every creative's mind you want your work to be successful yeah um but that's not necessarily what it's all about for me you know that was a moment in time that we knew the world needed to hear and the world's hearing it and it. it's all around i mean it's just it's just crazy to see how fast everything is traveling i'm i'm i'm, I'm getting messages from people all over the world saying that they love it that they're really into it that's and, great. And, and that's what it's about you know just continuously keeping the ball rolling of course and yeah. with the stuff that you do that's just for you mm -hmm. do we have an ep ready to go do we have yeah, an album EP. it's an ep an ep you know, i wanted to do an ep first only because i feel like my first album i want to be um an all live experience okay and with that being what, said the way really? that i want to film i mean the way that i want to record it is going to be very cinematic and dope, man. I just want it to be like a really good vibe, something that can land in a bunch of movies, something that can... But it's it's a pretty expensive process to of work course. off the vintage gear I got in mind yeah. to do what I have to do. So I just kind of want to just get the get the... You know, get the back line ready and, and uh, like Hell yeah. knock it out when the time is right. So an EP is going to be first, and yeah. it's going to be an album. Are you releasing this these both like independently? Is it just you? Well, EP is is um, something that I'm going to do independently. Great. Um, which is just I think the best time. This is the best time yes. to be an independent artist. I think in the history of music. It's mm -hmm. all, it, so like it's unbelievable. Un, they have unparalleled. Everything and, set yeah. up for you, so you can just do it yourself and mm -hmm. have fun and tour and you know and uh, just be a rock star, do my thing. You know, I think it's going to be a real good time. Um, but I do have that major label vision at some yes. point. I just, I just want to come in with, you know, a ready, a ready situation. Hell yeah. Video shot, things going on, movies out, TV shows totally going. Totally get like, it. So that I, I just don't want anybody to have an excuse to overlook what I, what I have to offer. Yes. Yeah. Well said. Because yeah. you've been in situations where people have overlooked what, whether you, what you have to offer, what it's others tough. around it's you tough. have to you know, offer. You get, you get clumped in with the glee kids, you get clumped hmm. in with the this and the yeah. that and the that. Yeah. And it's like, not to say that I'm, I think I'm just better. No. But it's just, I'm just saying, I, I know I have something real to offer the industry yes. and it's being recognized, not just by the Grammy Association, but by my peers, Dude, by it. the people that I've like, you know, grown up listening to, you know, there's, they're, they're they're listening to my stuff, not knowing who's doing it, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Not knowing who's doing it, and still liking it and loving it, yeah. not liking it, loving, loving it. it. And that's the thing. It's like, all right. So I see what's going on here. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just keep hitting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep moving. I'm gonna keep getting things going. And in due time, I know I'm gonna be recognized the way I'm supposed to be. Yes. Okay. You have, you have any big songs coming out with like any big artists that you can't really talk about? But I'm gonna ask you about it anyway. Well. I've already kind of talked about some of the bigger stuff, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, um, and like, you know, release any crazy information. But you know, working with Rex Kudo, we 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 we've, we've got our our records out with everybody um, from from it was, it was really unfortunate Kodak Black who's in who's in who's mm -hmm. in prison right now. He cut a bunch of stuff and and Future and Thug and like I said, Kanye's been taking stuff. But um, it's just one of those things where nothing is out yet. Other than the Thug uh, record Safe that came out, um, cool. But uh, you know, there, there's there's definitely a lot on the way. Me and my production partner have been uh, you know in talks with Universal Republic too, just with a bunch of their artists and you know 
just, Dude. just, just making the rounds, making the rounds. Mm -hmm. Things but are I've coming. Been, uh -huh. I've, I've been really acting focused, man. I mean, I knew that leverage was going to be something that was needed moving forward. Yeah. You know, you kind of got to have that golden nugget to make make the industries jealous. I kind of got to keep playing them like, you know. You have to. You gotta <laughs> kind of got to keep playing them a little bit because, you know, music gets jealous. They see I'm doing like a movie, a huge film. They see I'm doing a, a TV show on HBO and immediately everybody's like, Oh, how can we yeah. be about, how, what, what can we do, you know? <laughs> how do we but, leverage the, right. the growth of one asset against another? Exactly, exactly. So for me, now that's just uh, knowing that I was able to get that done. I hit the pavement running, you know, made sure I was prepared for every audition, ready for every opportunity. Awesome. And um, right now I got a lot of stuff under my belt, you know, uh, a pilot for Netflix that hopefully, will, you know, go through. Tell me and, about this um, HBO show. Insecure. It, it's, it's on its uh, second season. And um, I'm I'm playing a love interest for the first time. Cool. Um, but that's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> when is it? Okay. Then. Yeah. Do you have a release date for season I two? I have no idea what's going on. I'm filming right now, and um, Great. I don't know if I've already said too much. But like, okay. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just vibing. Uh, but you are doing a you are doing a movie. <laughs> yeah, Detroit. I can't talk about that. Um, but they're even being secretive still for some reason. But um, I've heard good things about yeah, this oh, movie. It's, Amazing, man. I mean, I was on set of that thing. Just, just, just. My mom was blown every day yeah. because, you know, you're in these situations as an actor where they where they put the work on you. They tell you, imagine this, imagine that. But that's not what I went through. I went through a full blown experience that was documented, and it's 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 gonna be out there. You'll see it soon. Detroit. Um, it's set in the 1960s. It's about the Detroit riots. Wow. And, um, you know, Miguel's in it with me, Will Poulter, Anthony Mackie. This, um, cool. this is apparently, uh, I, again, Lattimore. a big one, like a really game-changing film. This is a big one. This is a yeah. big one. This is one of those films that you, you're a part of and you, you know, talk about it to your peers and they go, oh, yes, really? Okay. All right. I see what you're doing now. <laughs> I see what's up, man. See you. <laughs> but the thing is, is that the public doesn't necessarily know yet, but um, when it's... When it's out, I feel like everybody will get why everybody was so secretive and why, yeah. you know, all of these great actors were, 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 were chosen to be on on one project because it was truly a special story that needs to be told. You know, um, in our history, we tend to sweep over the nasty parts. Uh, you know? Every time. And that is one of the ugliest things about our culture. Um, but I, I, I'm just... I'm just really thankful for the fact that Catherine Bigelow wanted to tell this story and that I was able to be a part of, you cool. know, my heritage, man. This is, I mean, this is, this is what I'm all about, yeah. you know. I mean, um, my, my mom taught black history, so it's just really amazing to be able to be a part of history in this way to just tell this story and, and uh, you know, sing my heart out. I'm singing through the whole thing. So. Are you really? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to see what's oh. up. You're going to see what's going on. Leon Thomas. Seriously, yeah. man, you are on an incredible journey. And it really, it's it's so awesome to watch and to just Man, kind of just you. be in the zone and watch it all happen and unfold. And I, I read your tweet the other day about seeing your ex-lover. <laughs> yeah. Was it really good to see her? It was horrible, bro. <laughs> 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 like, it was, nah, it was. Could have told cool. you that. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna just tell you how my life works, man. I, I feel like I don't know if there's something spooky going on, but like if I if I think about something it'll just like pop up or if i really want something deeply like it, it'll just it'll just show up and it's interesting i, I she was kind of in my subconscious like for the last couple of days and then i go to this little party that i wasn't supposed to go to and i'm sitting there minding my business and you know i glance over and i see her and i'm like oh man i mean it's my it's my ex it was probably one of my first loves and and um it was a little cold at first it was short but uh, it's just it's just kind of bittersweet, you know, knowing that I knew her so well, and now I'm a bit of a stranger. But you know, it is what it is. Life is life. By the way, that's the law of attraction. Yeah. You know, thinking yeah. about something, putting something out there, and it's just happening. The day after that, I'm in a meeting, and she happened to call the A and R I was working with. Crazy, yeah. right? It's just weird. like out of all the times yeah. for her to call, wow. out of all the times, like right in that meeting, right when I'm sitting there, it's like crazy maybe this is a sign i don't think it's a sign i think it's um, <laughs> you want to stay just, away <laughs> it's not a sign. that happened you know it was a warning something that went down i don't know if it's a warning either she's a beautiful girl awesome person it's all my fault everything's good I, I you know i'm just you know i know i know i got to keep it moving i have 
a journey to live. I, I'm just I'm just a big fan of destiny, and I feel something great coming my way. You never know. Amazing. Yeah. Leon Thomas, thank you so much for hanging out, my friend. Uh, really, the greatest man. pleasure. Yeah. Thank, oh, you. Man. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really. <laughs>